Hey guys, this is Jim Kane for YCD, and you're watching FEP Labs Radio. Thanks for stopping by. I wanted to show you a gadget I bought a long time ago, sometime in the mid '90s, um, probably around '95 or '96, somewhere back in there. This is an Opto Electronics uh, Scout Model 40, and this is a frequency counter, a wireless frequency counter, and uh, you know it has. Um, several functions that it'll do but the main one that this does and what I bought it for back in the day um, and let me back up let me tell you a little story so I bought this years ago as I said back in the 90s and that date is based on the battery pack that I took out of it the old NICAD pack that was in here that was long dead um, I've been into scanners forever um, I was in the volunteer fire department for 27 years so always listening to our department and the county sheriff and so on and so forth and always have been interested in scanners anyway and so i bought this and uh what this allowed allows you to do it's, it still works fine i had to replace the battery pack is uh you can turn this on and as you walk or drive or or just set it close to a radio it will catch the frequencies that are transmitted so it looks for a frequency spike above background level noise and it's got of course a microprocessor in it uh, that it uses to detect that so when it sees a frequency it records it and you can use it in a recording mode or you can use it in an instantaneous read mode either way uh, <clears throat> so I would uh, drive around town the county here switch to a trunking system back in the mid 90s and I didn't know all the frequencies and it wasn't published on radio reference at the time. I'm not even sure radio reference was around back then because uh, we're talking like 25, 26 years ago. So this was the only way I could figure out the frequencies to put them in the scanner. Um, I had a Radio Shack Pro 2006 scanner that I added the mod board so it would follow uh, EDAC's trunking system. But to do that, you had to have all the frequencies for it. And again, there was no FCC database back then that you could access publicly. There was no radio reference, none of that. So this was the only way to find out scanner frequencies. And I used it to get, you know, the county um, trunking system frequencies. But you can use it for anything. It will pick up from 50 hertz, 50 kilohertz, excuse me, uh, up to 1.4 gigahertz. Um, actually, it might be 50 hertz. I can't remember, I have to check the manual. So the way this works is pretty slick and there's there's some variations in the way it works, but I, I don't want this to be a long video and I'm not gonna take this apart. I, I did just put it back together to uh, after I got the battery in it. So you turn it on and it boots up and you can see it's uh, self-test stuff and we'll clear out whatever's in there. And then I have a trusty Baofeng here. This is my UV6R, which as far as Baofengs go is a, is a decent little radio. And when you add a very good antenna to it, um, it makes it even better. This is, a, uh, this is the Nagoya uh, 77, or dime, excuse me, it's a Diamond 77CA antenna. And it's an excellent two meter 440 antenna. But that's, this is a different show. So anyway, this guy's got a standard stubby antenna on it, and this is basically a two meter 440, but according to the documentation, it will receive just fine. Um, and as you know, you can receive on a coat hanger just about. Transmitting is where you need to have more of a matched antenna. In any case, so what this guy does, let me turn on the fang. And as you can see, I'm set for 146.52 here. And I'm going to move the radio away a little bit. And it indicated that we're getting signal. The red light means it's actively catching a signal. It's rejecting it because it's less than 10 kilohertz away from the signal it just caught. So it just ignores it as a duplicate. I can set this uh, by setting these various buttons to save and capture these. There's 400 memories that this thing stores. Um, and then you can download them later. Uh, so that's on UHF. Let me pop this over to, or that's on VHF. Let me pop this over to UHF. And let me key up on this. 
K and 4YCD tests, one, two, three, four. And you can see it's picking up on 444. If I change frequency more than 10 kilohertz, it should capture the new frequency. K and 4YCD test clear. And it did. The radio says 444.025. We got 024, but close enough for ham, right? So uh, that's pretty slick. And combinations of these buttons during power on, it will uh, vibrate and or beep when it captures a new frequency. So if you're trying to be stealthy, obviously you don't want that on. Um, you may want it on because you're only trying to capture one event. You know, I'm looking for somebody to key up so I can figure out what frequency they're on to add to the scanner. And you can just set the, the buzzer to come on and you'll feel it buzz. It's got a little, little belt clip on it. This is the uh, information on the bottom of this guy made by Optoelectronics. I believe they still make these. This is, again, this is a very old model. Um, I can set filtering. Now I've got it in capture mode. And so it's going to save the frequency and it should increment. Well, it zeroed it out. There we go. So now it's going to save them. And as I change frequencies, it should increment that. Yep, there we go. So now it's capturing these. So I can come back later and uh, dump these out. This has a very rudimentary CIV interface. And so with software, uh, you should be able to dump these out. It's a straight um, serial connection and the documentation gives you the which pin is data and which pin is ground. Um, I don't know what current software will read this. In the documentation for it, they list probably 10 or 15 older radios and scanners that you can use this to do what, what Opto calls reaction tune, which is as this finds a frequency, it tunes the scanner or the radio to that frequency. So that's pretty cool. Uh, you know, if you had a, a mobile scanner in your car, one of the ones supported by this, and the ones that are supported by this are, are old. Um, and it's a pretty decent list. Again, old. I mean, we're talking Pro 2006s and, and R7100s, very old scanners and radios. Uh, it will tune the radio to it. So that's pretty slick. Um, also, again, if you can read the serial port through whatever software is available that will read the serial port. And it's a standard CIV interface, so I suspect... Uh, you could probably trick FL Rig or Ham Radio Deluxe or something into giving you access to this to dump the contents out. And I don't know, Opto may still make a piece of software to read this thing. Or they may have a list of, uh, of software that would, uh, that would read it. But uh, that's it. It's, uh, it used a four battery NICAD pack. It takes nine to 12 volts DC. I replaced the NICADs with a four LIFEPO pack, um, so I'm still within the correct voltage range and shouldn't have any problems. The issue with NICADs, besides their very old technology, of course, is they don't hold a charge well over time. Uh, with LIFEPOs in here, I've got this thing charged, then I can just keep this in my go bag and the batteries should still be, you know, obviously hot when I go to use it. If I uh, turn it off while I'm holding the, the clear button, that will clear the memories out. And it will reboot. And it's clear and we have nothing and it's in, uh, it's in capture mode again. So I can turn capture off and leave filter on. Filter just basically, see now it's in, uh, let me hold it up to the mic. Now it's in vibrate mode. And those modes are set by what buttons are up or down when you power it on. So uh, anyway, so that's pretty cool. I don't know, uh, you know, if you're on a fox hunt or something, you know, you've got an active transmitter. This won't pick up real far away. You have to be fairly close to the keying um, transmitter. I've never tested how sensitive it is to background radio. 
Uh, I don't really have a way to do that at the moment. I may come back and revisit that in another video, but uh, I wanted to share this with everybody. I, I'm pleased I got it still working, um, but uh, it, it's a nice little gadget. In any case, guys, that's, uh, that's all I've really got for today. Uh, as always, feel free to leave a comment if you have any questions. I'd be glad to try and answer them about this. You can find the manual online. Believe me, I had to, uh, I had to dig out the manual because I couldn't remember how to work this thing. It had been so long since I've even played with it. I opened up a drawer that I haven't been in in a while. I was looking for something else and saw this at the bottom, and I thought you guys would, uh, would maybe appreciate seeing this thing. So anyway, guys, if you would, leave a comment. Give me a thumbs up. Uh, if you're not subscribed, please make sure you are. And uh, ring that bell so you're notified whenever I post any new content. Thanks a lot. 73s.